Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Today, my team and I are presenting to you a market analysis on Alibaba Group. My team consists of William, Kaowing, Huimin, Dominic, and myself. So based on internal and external analysis conducted, we have identified several key findings that are pivotal to our recommendations, which are as follows. Externally, we identify an increasing trend of social commerce due to the growing young population in China. We also identify an increasing trend of e-commerce retail sales in the lower tier cities. There's also an increasing demand for cloud computing services as institutions look to streamline their operational efficiencies, which has accelerated due to COVID-19. Internally, we discovered that Alibaba has a limited logistical network coverage, especially in the lower tier cities. Lastly it would be that Alibaba has strong financial capabilities and performance. To address these key findings, my team and I have come up with the following three strategies. First would be to acquire Xiaohongshu, Second will be to introduce a one-party marketplace capability for Alibaba. And lastly is to establish a partnership with Soho to develop AliDrive. Before we go into the details of our analysis and strategies, a little background information about Alibaba is that the company is founded in 1999 and was listed on the New York Stock Exchange in 2014 in record-breaking fashion. The company's main business segments are e-commerce and cloud computing, which is also the largest in China. Some of their platforms, which I believe most of you are familiar with, would be Taobao, Tmall, and Lazada. Moving on to our SOAR analysis, a strength we identified for Alibaba would be its strong customer base and brand name due to its broad product portfolio and market influence. Currently, Alibaba possesses the largest domestic market share in China in e-commerce and cloud computing with a market share of 55.9% and 46.4% respectively. Alibaba has also has strong financial capabilities with a steady increase in revenue and a stable profit margin of 20% over the past 5 years. However, a weakness we identified will be its limited network coverage on its in-house logistical network, as they are mainly concentrated in the upper tier cities. This is a weakness due to the shift in consumer purchasing trends as online retail sales are increasing in the lower tier cities. This essentially prevents Alibaba from capturing a larger market share hence hindering their long-term growth and sustainability in the domestic e-commerce market. Another weakness will be its lost operating segments. As mentioned previously, Alibaba's main business segments lie in e-commerce and cloud computing. However, the other two segments, digital entertainment and innovation segments, are making losses. Although these losses only contribute to 6.6% of total revenue, it depicts Alibaba's effectiveness in using and allocating its resources to those segments. This may decrease investors' confidence and affect the group's reputation in the long run as China's leading technological company. Let's now move on to the external factors affecting Alibaba. Under the opportunities, we have found out that there is an increasing trend of social commerce. Content sharing and group buying platforms like Towing and Pintuoto has experienced an exponential growth. Additionally, key opinion leaders or influencers have become increasingly important in influencing customers' behaviors on their purchases. Furthermore, we also have identified that there is a growing income level from the lower tier cities which led to an increasing number of e-commerce purchases originating from this region. More than 70% of the Chinese population are living in this region, providing Alibaba with a huge opportunity to tap into. Lastly, the COVID-19 pandemic and the trend of remote working has increased the demand of cloud-based services to both end consumers and businesses. Businesses are looking for cheaper solution to streamline the operation while the co-working platforms is needed to collaborate with their fellow colleague. Externally, Alibaba is also facing multiple threats. We have identified that e-commerce market has increasingly become more saturated with the influx of smaller market players. Despite their sizes, these platforms have managed to penetrate fast, securing larger market share as they are able to cater for the changing customer behavior. Similarly, the cloud computing market has become more competitive. Baidu and Huawei have ramped up their operation to cater for the growing demand. Tencent, the second largest player in the cloud computing market, has also secured multiple government contracts to help with the Chinese smart cities initiatives. Furthermore, there is an increasing threat originating from the PRC government with the antitrust law and the additional business regulation. This regulation may potentially affect Alibaba businesses to expand further, therefore halting Alibaba's long-term sustainability. 
Now, let's move on to our recommendation for Alibaba. The first strategic issue that we identified is that Alibaba currently has a weak presence in social commerce. Social commerce is currently a rising trend among China's large, young demographic where their purchase behaviours are highly influenced by word of mouth and key opinion leaders on social media platforms. Although Alibaba has attempted to introduce a social media feature called Weitao in their platform, takeouts remain low and they still remain known as a traditional e-commerce platform to the consumers. With a growing trend in social-driven buying and emerging social commerce platforms in the market, Alibaba's inability to keep up with the changing consumer preferences will cause them to lose competitiveness. As such, we recommend that Alibaba acquire a controlling interest in Xiaohongshu so that they can stay relevant by adapting to the social commerce ecosystem and continuously capture the market share of China's large young population. So why do we choose Xiaohongshu? Xiaohongshu is currently the largest and fastest growing social commerce platform with over 300 million registered users. The user base is predominantly Gen Z and millennial females living in first and second tier cities where they tend to have higher purchasing power and will be advantages for Alibaba. Recently, their user base has also been expanding towards lower tier cities, in line with Alibaba's opportunities as well. Xiaohongshu's social commerce ecosystem aligns with the trend of social-driven buying, where it allows users to seamlessly transition between content browsing, product discovery and purchase within the application. It is also notable that content in Xiaohongshu posted by their users and key opinion leaders are known to be high quality and reliable, which is an intangible asset for the application. This has resulted in a commercial rate that is higher than established e-commerce platforms like JD or even Tmall. After the acquisition, our plan for Alibaba will be to leave the app unchanged for the first 1-2 to two years. This is to ensure that we retain the trust and confidence of Xiaohongshu's existing users so that Alibaba can maintain the app's high quality content and loyal user base. Next, we intend to balance the general demographics as there is an increasing trend of social commerce purchases from the young Chinese male population. By tapping into this trend, we can widen the user base for Xiaohongshu. Once the user base and demand for e-commerce peaks in the long run, we intend to convert Xiaohongshu's e-commerce platform, fully sure, to Alibaba's platform, Taobao. This is so that Xiaohongshu can leverage on Alibaba's wider network of merchants, products and logistics to expand their e-commerce platform and cater to the demand. At the same time, this strategy will create a synergistic effect as Xiaohongshu's social commerce ecosystem will enhance Taobao's integrity and reliability. This will generate a higher conversion rate and healthy GMV for Alibaba's e-commerce platforms. With improvements in living standards and rising income levels, China's next big wave of consumption is likely to occur in the lower tier cities. Alibaba relies heavily on third-party providers to help fulfill its orders. Because of the relative scarcity of high-quality logistics providers, logistics chains are generally longer in lower-tier cities. This extends delivery time and increased logistics costs, inevitably affecting Alibaba's online market penetration. To meet the demand in lower-tier cities, Alibaba must develop its own fulfillment capabilities. We recommend that Alibaba adopt a dual business model, in addition to being a third-party marketplace where merchants list their products and sell to the end customer, Alibaba should also purchase and resell in a first party's capacity. In a 1P model, Alibaba will act as a retailer while merchants will act as wholesalers. It will buy products from the merchants and sell them on its platform. Alibaba assumes control of the product listing and its distribution strategy. Alibaba has a cost advantage over the merchants because it has access to vast amounts of consumption data. Therefore, it can better gauge market elements and consumer demand in lower tier cities. The insights gained can be used to optimize inventory levels and delivery nodes. This will shorten lead time and lower costs, creating a better shopping experience for customers. The construction of logistics infrastructure in lower tier cities will promote development of the Chinese economy. The Chinese government has a vested interest in increasing the coverage of logistics services in lower tier cities. As such, Alibaba can tap on government grants to help co-fund the program. Given Alibaba's lack of warehousing capabilities, we recommend that Alibaba partner and acquire existing retailers or logistics companies. It can then leverage their expertise to build its network of warehouses in lower tier cities. Our third key strategic issue is the ban on American companies like Google and Dropbox in China, creating a gap in the market for file sharing and productivity tools such as Google Drive. Our recommendation is for Alibaba to create a cloud sharing and collaborative productivity tool platform similar to Google Drive and Dropbox 
which allows users across the globe to work with each other through the internet on standardized file types such as documents, PowerPoint, and Excel. There is an increased reliance on online productivity tools due to the COVID-19 pandemic, as workers and students around the world have to work or study from home. We believe this arrangement will persist even after the pandemic ends, as we are shifting away from the old paradigm of always being in the office or school. Leveraging on Alibaba Cloud's existing infrastructure of data centers across the globe, we believe that the new platform that we want to launch, Dart Ali Drive, will not cost Alibaba any significant capital expenditure. As Alibaba provides an online ecosystem, we will be able to easily tap on existing customer base to sell these services too. We recommend a strategic partnership with an existing market player, Soho, to launch this product. This is because although Zoho currently has an existing product, there has been many complaints of it being slow, likely due to it being hosted on inferior servers. Alibaba will onboard Zoho onto our global cloud network and this will reduce the time and resources needed for Alibaba to re release such a platform onto the market, allowing Alibaba to quickly gain market share while expanding its business ecosystem. With this new platform, Alibaba is able to provide a wider range of integrated products and services to entice new customers and retain existing ones. In conclusion, based on the strategic issues and findings on Alibaba's e-commerce and cloud computing businesses, we recommend that they firstly acquire Xiaohongshu, secondly establish one key capability, and lastly partner with Zoho to develop and launch AliDrive. This allows Alibaba to capitalize on opportunities, address their weaknesses, and achieve long-term sustainable growth. Thank you for listening and we will now take questions.